you just want to stand so we can say a prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I believe in one God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. And in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all ages, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one essence with the Father, through him all things were made, who for us and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became human, and was crucified for us under Pontius Pilate, and suffered and was buried, and rose on the third day according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, and will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. And in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who together with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, and who spoke through the prophets. In one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I expect the resurrection of the dead and life of the age to come. Amen. Take a seat. Thank you everyone for coming tonight, and especially on such short notice as well. Um, as you know, we're here for a special reason, because we have what we call a special guest, um, Nan Christina, which is from uh, where she's not originally from Jerusalem, she's originally a uh, kangaruda, she's one of us, a Nazi. Um, but now she resides in the Holy Land in Jerusalem. Uh, I've known Nan Cristina for a few years now, for quite a few years, even before she became a nun, when she was Anna still, um, originally from Brisbane, um, and where she was running then the Orthodox Bookshop at St. George's, Etsy. Um, and so we've had a connection since then, and so it's such a pleasure for myself and an honor to have her here tonight, a sister Cristina, and to speak to us about whatever she wants to speak to us. I'm sure she has a lot of things that she can share with us which will be beneficial for us. So thank you very much for being here tonight, Sister Christina. Sit, stand. I'll sit. Can you hear me in the microphone? Yes? Okay. Thank you, Father, for the invitation. Uh, I'm going to talk about a range of topics. If you want to ask any questions as we go, just put up your hand. I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, I'll try and answer the main ones that people always ask me. Uh, so I wanted to start off to talk about what it's like to live in Jerusalem. So Jerusalem is called the Holy Land for a reason. It's very holy. It has a lot of grace, uh, more than any other place that I've been to. But with grace also comes temptation. So it's not an easy place to live, live in. Uh, there's this lady in, in, who lives in Jerusalem. She said to me, Jerusalem is the easiest place to be saved because there are so many temptations that you can get saved, saved through these temptations. So that is, that's what makes Jerusalem a special place. Plus we have the, uh, the Holy Tomb. I don't know if many of you saw National Geographic came to the Holy Tomb when it was being renovated. You might have seen it on the internet. So when they were renovating the tomb, they pulled away the marble that covers the actual tomb, the burial bed that Christ was, thank you that Christ was buried on. And so what they were doing is they have this special machinery that can see in the ground to see what's underneath, whether there's, it's, it's a limestone um, tomb, but they can see what else, if there's rocks, if there's metal, whatever, that, you know, that really, really expensive machinery. And three times their machines broke in the holy tomb. So they actually gave up trying to see what's there because because of the grace and if you watch the videos from National Geographic the guy says there is so much energy coming out of this place I mean that wasn't their machinery that was that was this 
you know, this man who's not a Christian, that was his take on um, what, what happens in the holy tomb. And so for me, and, you know, uh, Zakharula went to the holy tomb, you know, she stayed with me the last couple of weeks, and I think you would agree that when you go to the holy tomb, everything changes, like life stops. Did you feel that? Yes. So Jerusalem is so busy at the moment. There are so many tourists and you, you walk into the holy tomb and it's like you've walked onto another planet. Life stops and you're just there with God. And I have to admit that one of, um, one of the privileges of living in Jerusalem and so close to the holy tomb, I'm like a 200 meter walk to give you an idea of how close it is, is that... Um, you know, people ask me to pray for them because we're nuns and that's what people do. And so even when I don't have time to do, you know, a hundred gombaskinia for the person or whatever, I walk into the holy tomb and I say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on your servant, Father Demostini. And I feel like I've done everything for them. That's how much grace it has. You feel like you've helped them more than anything and not because of something I did, because God... It gave so much grace to this place because that's where he resurrected. Uh, and that is the biggest privilege of um, living in Jerusalem. Uh, but just like Christ, we suffer a lot of temptations. And it was funny because the other day uh, I was walking um, down this laneway. So our monastery is located in the Jewish section of Jerusalem. And we're the only Christian. So we're not just the only Orthodox, we're the only Christian monastery in the Jewish quarter. And uh, one of the main things that happens is we get spat on. And so it's actually illegal to spit on people. So I'm walking through this laneway and I won't mention the religion, but it wasn't, he was not a Christian. And he spat in front of me. And as I walked past, he spat behind me. And I was really annoyed because it's so rude. But anyway, this happens quite often. And I thought to myself afterwards, they used to spit at Jesus too. And I thought, how privileged am I? I just, I just suffered a very miniature version of what Christ went through. And so even with these temptations, and this goes for, it doesn't matter where you live, if you can look at them in a spiritual way, you can grow so much. And so when, I, when he spat on me, I was actually so happy about it afterwards because I thought, what a privilege. And then... There are many temptations in Jerusalem. And so what happens is, this is what I think anyway, I don't know what other people experience, but let's just say you have a, a habit in your life, like you're a really angry person. You'll find that when you come to Jerusalem, whatever nasty habits that you have, they get magnified. So if you're angry in Australia, you'll come to Jerusalem, you'll be 10 times angrier. Um, if you're jealous in Australia, you come to Jerusalem, you'll be 10 times more jealous. And so with the, like I said, with the grace comes the temptation. But at the same time comes the opportunity to be saved by overcoming these temptations. Um, and not just within yourself, but having the patience to deal with the other people who are fighting these temptations as well. And so, and this is why this lady said Jerusalem is the easiest place to be saved if you come with the right attitude. Okay, I made some notes, so I'll move on from that. One of the interesting things about Jerusalem is that it's very, it's like, you know, in Greece, it's, a, it's an Orthodox country. So when you go to Greece, you expect to see Orthodox churches. And then when you're in Australia, we're, we're such a minority. So when we see an Orthodox church, it's actually very rare. And when you come to Israel in general, there are, what you expect to see is also very different because here we have like the Catholics and we have the Protestants and stuff like that. But you go to Jerusalem and although they are present, they don't really have many significant places. And so when you go to the most holy of holiest places, like the Holy Sepulchre, um, the Praetorium, which is the Jail of Christ, and you see that it's all Orthodox, you actually start to appreciate more your Orthodox faith because when you see the holiest places and they're Orthodox, it, it clicks in your head that 
we're in the right religion. And um, I met this, because uh, we get a lot of visitors and a lot of um, converts, and I met this guy and I said to him, so how did you become Orthodox? And he said to me, well, I came to Jerusalem, I saw everything was Orthodox, so it was just obvious. You know, that the orthodoxy is the origin of, you know, Christianity from, from then. And so that's one of the other very interesting things in, um, in Jerusalem. Uh, and then, you know, the, the other faiths bring temptations with that because they think they're, they're the original faith. But it's very interesting um, dynamic to come and, and to see that. So the other thing that's very interesting in Jerusalem is that it's basically a desert and it's a very harsh place to live. And so people come and stay with us and they're like, we want to experience the monastic life. You know, some people say that. And then they come and they see we, we actually live a, a very relaxed life as far as monasticism goes. And that's because when some things are so hard, like living in, in a desert almost, that you, you take on other luxuries, if that can make sense. So, you know, we, we might, I have a blessing to drink water before I have Holy Communion, because if I don't, like if I walk half an hour to get to church, well, I'll, I'll drink water beforehand, otherwise within church I'll probably pass out if I don't. And so you come to Jerusalem and the, the monastic life is not as harsh as it is in a monastery. It's not as strict, um, but that's because we have the temptations to deal with, uh, the way of life there, um, the food is not very good. And so it's, it's a bit more relaxed. So I'll tell you what my daily life composes of. Uh, I wake up in the morning. I probably go to church in the morning three to four times a week. And then I work in the Patriarchate. So I'm one of the administration assistants. And then I come home and I will do my Vespers and my Compline and my Combeskinia, and that's it. And, it. and it doesn't sound like a very monastic life, but at the same time, 